Let me tell you, I finally watched the Kennedy Center Honors. I think I was thoroughly entertained throughout it. I know I'm like 80 years late, right? I finally found a link. <laughs> I don't have a regular TV. I found a link and I kind of understood what I was talking about last week when I said that person. Um, They were like... Uh, <laughs> Gladys Knight didn't get a really good tribute. Low key, I feel like Gladys probably would a great give a great better tribute. Um, Mickey Giver, Patty Labelle, Ariana Debo, the Rose Devos. Um, I believe she's she's a Broadway singer, but I believe she's a um. Actress also, right? I think she just won an Oscar last year. Last year. And Garth Brooks. They all, like, gave her her tribute. Garth sang Midnight Train to Georgia, which was originally Midnight Plane to Houston. <laughs> um, Garth did an okay job. Okay. Oh, Ariana did very interesting. I think it was like a sort of Broadway. I don't think a lot of people enjoyed it from the comments that I read immediately. It was sort of like this like Broadway-ish screaming yet kind of good vocal moment from her. Mickey Giver did really, really beautiful. Although it was like the change in the song sounded like two different songs. I'm not, I wasn't familiar with the song that she... Um, Sang and then Patty LaBelle and they all came out. Now, Ricky Minor. Wait, let me talk about Ariana. Oh shoot, Ariana, right quick. Ricky Minor had um, produced, I guess, the whole thing. But my really my favorite parts were my favorite part was the Pips, the three dudes singing. Um, I don't know if they were, I think, I think they were lip syncing because at one point it seemed like one dude wasn't singing. He was just dancing. <laughs> so I was just like, is he singing or not? But then they had the earrings. So I'm like, okay, maybe they kind of are singing, but I think everybody wears earrings now. All the, um, the band and performers on stage, I think they all wear earrings now. I don't know. It's weird. But they were really, really great. The the harmony, whether they were live or not, the harmony was like really great on their on their end, and very entertaining on that part. But then Ariana, they, yeah, that part. Okay, wait, Patty. Okay, so I see why they didn't post Patty's performance. <sighs> Let me know what you think. Because Patty's performance was like 15 seconds. And I was very disappointed. But she did it really good in her 15 seconds that they had. It was like they ran out of time or something. I don't know. Or maybe she it was like requested or conducted to have it that way. I don't know. But overall, Gladys, congratulations on your Kennedy Center honor. Um, CC and BB, okay, no shade, but like really the black people, they slayed this entire show, right? CC and BB slayed it for Jesus. They killed it for Jesus. I don't know. Oh, they were singing some Amy Grant song. And I was thoroughly moved. I was really like, oh my gosh, they sound really, really great. Even though they're not like together anymore like that. I'm like they they really sound great, and then there was an opera singer who did a um who did the, a tribute to one of the a, a pianist. I'm not sure what her name was, but the opera singer killed it. Okay, the black opera singer killed it, and then George Clooney Clooney, which I wasn't sure why he was up there. Maybe I'm just not in touch with like his work like that. I know he does a lot of Philip. Philo uh, philanthropy philanthropic work I know he does a lot of that and that you know could con contribute 
But other than his acting, which I'm not entertained by, <laughs> I don't know why he was up there. But anyways, the black lady who sang George Clooney's tribute was incredible also. So with George Clooney being up there, I'm like, why hasn't, you know, Patty been up there? But that's none of my business. I'm not going to go into that because I already went into that. But speaking of Patty, she, um, she's becoming a little busy, right? This past week or weekend, I think it might have been, she did the, um, she became an honorary soror. And that is really exciting, I guess. <laughs> I don't understand how you can, like, like, what do you get? Do you get something from it? Or they're just, like, honoring you for, like, the things that you've done? I don't know. Because Fantasia, like, a couple last year became an honorary, or she became a soror in something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um... But Patty, Eric, Erica Campbell, and it was another lady, or it was two other ladies. Oh, um, uh, track and field Olympian Alyssa Felix, Allison Felix, Grammy Award winning soul artist. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was another person, but they became um, in the celebration of their 115th Founders Day, Alpha Kappa. Alpha Sorority Incorporated welcomed four trailblazing, trailblazing women into their sisterhood as honorary members. Which is, oh, it was another lady, Lisa Blunt Ra Rochester. So that was like flooded all in her, like her, um, her tagged on face on Instagram. And so, um, a statement of the sorority's website, a.k.a. Um, the CEO, Danette Anthony Reed, says, The honorary members exemplify the core values of a.k.a. through their extraordinary achievements and God-given talents. I am honored to welcome Campbell, Felix, LaBelle, and Blunt Rochester during this historic occasion marking 115 years of service to all mankind uh other people past honorees are Curtis scott king gladys <laughs> janet pickett smith uh jada i'm sorry <laughs> uh tracy ellis ross and more sunday ceremony was columnate was the culmination Culmination of weekend of activities in DC to celebrate Alpha Kappa Alpha uh, their anniversary. <clears throat> so that's cool. I don't know what to do. I guess they're just like honoring you for being a part of doing great in the world. It was the same with like those honorary degrees, right? It's kind of weird. Okay. <laughs> But anyway, so also, Miss LaBelle is going to be at um, Florida's Mardi Gras special. Not special. Mardi Gras situation in um, in Florida. So next month, uh, she's giving a free show to kick off um, Orlando Universal Orlando Resorts Mardi Gras concert series on February 4th. Now, this is so funny because <laughs> all these people are like completely different artists, right? There's Marin Morris. I'm not who she there is. But I'm just like picturing, I don't know who these people are, but I know the Goo Goo Dolls. I think they're like a rock band or like a pop group ish. And then Lauren Daigle. And I'm just like, and then there's Patty LaBelle. So, like, <laughs> they have somebody for everybody at the Mardi Gras Festival. Um, going on. She's going to be on the 4th. Oh, that's next week. Next weekend. Um, so, yeah. If you're in the town. Maybe if you're already. Oh, it's free. So, just pop on out there. <laughs> Anyways, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, okay. So, I want to say something. 
about Mary J. Blige. Oh my God, Mary J. Blige's birthday was like a week ago or something like that. And Instagram was still popping her Instagram stuff. I mean, her birthday stuff on my feet. And I'm like, okay, enough. But anyways, I listened to the break, the breakthrough. Now the breakthrough, I think they had, I think the breakthrough and um, the Emancipation of Mimi, they both came out at similar times. They both had that one staple song with other really great hits. Um, and I think they have similar um, writers. Or, yeah, the writers on them. So everybody's always like, the breakthrough or the emancipation. The breakthrough or Mimi. And I made up my decision. The, the breakthrough has really great singles. Of course, um, Be Without You was like, you know, that soaring single that... I think, in a way, brought her back to, um, I don't want to say relevancy, but brought her back into, like, this quote-unquote comeback. Because I don't think the couple, I think it had been a couple of albums before, since Mary at the time had had, like, a really hit. And I listened to it. I don't know why I hadn't ever really, like, listened to all of The Breakthrough. I don't know why, but I, this a couple of days ago, I decided to do it, and I was kind of disappointed. Yeah, if it wasn't the singles, like, I wasn't really playing it, or I skipped it halfway through. Um, it's weird. Mary J's hooks and her melodies... They're kind of like not typical in the way she sings them. It's like sometimes they're off. Like, wait, I think it should be this way, but she's singing it that way. <laughs> That's how it kind of sounded. A couple of songs, like, especially one song, I forget what song it was, but it was just like, wait. And then sometimes the vocal is a little jarring. And I was just like, okay. And you know what? That one album album before, I think it's Love and Life or something. Craig Seymour, the musical journalist, he loves that album. And I can't find one song on that album that I like. I can find like one song on like probably, excuse me, one or two, three, maybe four songs on her albums that I like on like all of her albums but that album mm -mm. that's just my opinion but anyways so I'm picking mine again I'm picking Stay the Night I'm picking I Wish You Knew Don't Forget About Us over the other songs and I think she had like sampled herself um, on the breakthrough whatever you do what you got to do. You do what you want. Next car, honey. Next car. You know how I came across that? I was thinking about Mary J. Um, I was thinking about how her second to last album, what, Strength of a Woman. I, I was thinking about how Strength of a Woman was going to be the last of her, you know, divorce topics, divorce album self-esteem sort of album situation because then good morning gorgeous kind of has that same background about her past relationship with ken do or ken don't whatever <laughs> so the and i was thinking like good about well, good morning gorgeous i'm like okay good morning gorgeous no it's not completely about now i'm thinking about it it's not completely about a relationship it's actually like really good, feel good R and B music. You know, you can really play it through. Um, it's amazing. I think that's the name of the song with DJ Khalid as Patti LaBelle called him. That came in my head, so I was like, let me listen to that. So I ended up listening to the whole thing. You know, it has some really great songs on it with like Usher and um, I want to call him NJ Pack, but the Pac Man from uh, with Bruno Mars, uh, the. Good Morning Gorgeous with uh, her, H-E-R. Like, it has some really great songs on there. 
And so now I was thinking, like, given my in my head, I was giving my opinion, thinking and get ready for the podcast, and thinking, let me give my predictions because the Grammys are coming soon. I think Mary J is going to win. I'm hopeful that Mary J is going to win, even though Beyonce is probably next in line to being deserving of winning like the big titles. But I do hope Mary J takes home at least one award, maybe two, in the R and B category if she doesn't get the um, my thing and my reasoning behind this is Mary J is she put out a really great body of work and had a really great kind of promotional thing going on with Good Morning Gorgeous and then also why would I I wouldn't think they would bring an artist like that an artist, an older artist, I'm not going to just say, I wouldn't think they would bring an older artist and give her all these nominations or a seasoned artist who isn't necessarily like pop, 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 but she's definitely like really great and doing great in her own category, in her R&B category. Um, I wouldn't think they would bring her this far and bring her, give her that many nominations and not give her at least like one or one or at least have like a thought of like hopefully the winnings are great for the uh, record or the album of the year. I know she's nominated for one or one or both. Um, so I'm hoping I'm hopeful for Mary J. I'm also very hopeful for Beyonce, but I'm still mad at the way Beyonce. Like I said, I'm mad at Beyonce for the way that she put all her eggs in a basket, and I don't think it's doing well for her, or it's going to do it. Like if it either is going to do well for her or it's not, because I feel like her strong songs she put in the basket when I feel like we should have maybe waited until like next year again maybe put them out as singles throughout the year. Like, it's just so much. I'm not, I'm not a part of her PR. So let me shut the fuck up. Um, Madonna, she's going on tour. I'll watch the YouTube. (laughs) There's no way you can pay me. No, if it was free, maybe. I'm not spending my money to go watch Madonna act a fool on stage. Because at this point, that's what she's going to do. Oh, my gosh. I don't think... First of all, you're going to have to convince me that she's going to be singing well if she's going to sing at all. But again, you know, I don't... I'm not here for it. It's not my cup of tea. But shout out to Madonna going on this like 40 year anniversary hits world tour. It's so interesting how certain artists at a certain time in their careers, they don't want to look back at the music that they've done or sing the songs that they've sang to get them to that point. You know, this is, talking to Mariah too to be honest but then at a certain point they're gonna make a profit out of singing those old songs that they didn't want to sing before I just find it weird and I kind of feel like every artist kind of goes through that even like maybe you can even say Prince I feel like every artist kind of goes through that also side note Beyonce has this like first concert in what like five six years has it been that long maybe oh my gosh um she has this concert coming up in dubai or somewhere in the middle east and the rehearsals have been like somebody's been hearing her rehearse (laughs) and it's filling up the city of dubai which is hilarious Somebody's hearing her rehearse and the songs. Okay, so the songs have been confirmed that she's been rehearsing because it's not a sound check. A sound check is like the day of. I think these are um, these are definitely rehearsals. Drunk in love, halo, freedom, 
Spirit, Crazy in Love. What else? I think that's all I heard. And I'm like, no, I want to hear some new shit. But this isn't my concert. Um, I would be mad if I pay Beyonce money <laughs> for a private event. And she's like drunk and fucking. No, I like drunk and love. It's just like crazy in love. Like the thing is, she doesn't go off the way she used to do with crazy in love. Go back to like 2006. 2007, 2005, 2004, live in ATL, the I Am World Tour. I think she started having way too much fun with Crazy in Love during, like, the Miss Carter show. And that's where she kind of stopped going off. Like, she used to do the faces, the crazy vocals, the screaming, like, the Holy Ghost. (laughs) The ultimate Holy Ghost. She used to give us the Holy Ghost moments. And now it's just like, hey, y'all, this is me saying it crazy. I love, no, like, no. I think if she went back to the, like, the Holy Ghost, Crazy in Love endings, I probably would like Crazy in Love more. But I like Crazy in Love. I always have a big deal with Beyonce because, <clears throat> and not even her, but like a ton, of, not even a ton, all of these artists to a certain degree always sing their hits and i'm like maybe it's safe it could be safe but i uh, now i understand what prince was saying like shit i want to say something else i want to hear something else as a fan like singing but without you maybe she's holding back for the summer renaissance tour i think that's what the tour is going to be called i think i think she called it the uh, winter Ren- renaissance and her uh i'm just babbling along on her um <laughs> Her holiday cards, her holiday Christmas cards. So I think this the tour is coming and it's going to be in the summer. Everybody's touring in the summer, but I'm like, damn girl, like the summer's almost here. You better release these tickets. Like Madonna's telling us and her starts in July. By the way, we, before we know it, you know, July's going to burn her. Okay, I got to move on. Two more things I want to talk about right quick. Mariah. I think this popped in my head because she... I, don't know, I was in the shower and this popped in my head. But also, she's going to be at the Lovers and Friends Festival with, like, Usher and Christina, Mariah. Like, a whole lot of great entertainers. So that's going to be very interesting to watch. To see, you know, their set list. Child, the 30-minute second list. <sighs> That's the thing, like, I wish Patty would switch it up a little bit. I wish Mariah, Patty does switch it up a little bit. I wish Mariah did a little bit more switching up. Like, okay, we, we we belong together. We get it. What about Stay the Night? What about Make It Last Forever? What about the fantasy remix that's not ODB? Shit. Oh, no, I'm thinking of Heartbreaker <laughs> remix. <laughs> but anyways... Um, Mariah. Going back to her Christmas special. Did I say I enjoyed it? I don't know if anybody else watched it. I mean, if I said that I liked it. I kind of liked it. The Mariah... Go listen to the Mariah Reports report on her Christmas special. Because it was dead on with the different days. And, like, the editing was crazy. <clears throat> I think one concert wasn't taped. One concert, she was sick. One concert, she was well. It was just like, oh my gosh, that's a lot going on. But the thing is, I want Mariah to rework her music, her live vocals, or rework the live singing parts. Because as somebody said, Janet like goes into the studio <laughs> and <laughs> resings them because clearly Janet's voices voices changes has changed, but also, you know, she sounds different, right? So I'm like, Mariah sounds desperately different, and I don't know if it's going to get... I think we're stuck here at this moment. We're stuck here. Even though she said her voice is in really great shape, yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. I don't know what she was hearing before compared to what she's hearing now, but hey, we got to work with what we got. I'm going to do the best I can with what I got, okay? 
<clears throat> and I think that MC needs to go back in the studio and re-sing these songs. If you know, the like the caution tour. Yeah, I was thinking about the caution tour. The caution tour was great. They had really great, you know, press play moments. Pedal recently is like Mariah. We know you're not singing because it's so clear. And then when it comes back to her to sing her sing, you know, her with her voice, it's raspy, and it's like. Are we doing our warm up, sweetie? Are we drinking our tea, honey? Are we? Why don't we just rework the song? Rework the song to fit your voice now. Like, I think if you reworked it well enough, these songs, nobody gives a fuck if you're not hitting the note as high as you used to. If you're going to rework the song, use that lower register. You know what, Patty? Patty. At the end of the day, Patty will go to that low part of her voice and she will sing and it will sound great. Patty will use that low part of her voice, her, you know, lower range. Mariah has a lower range. It's just like, come on. I wish somebody would talk to her. And I also wonder what is that kind of conversation like as like the producer of your show or produ- or your engineer or whatever of the show? Like, what is that conversation like? Okay, so, you know, I'm going to not sing here. Like, what? that has to be such, like, a weird kind of conversation, in a sense. I mean, it's just, like, it's the thing now. Okay, but anyway, so, Rachel Ray. <coughs> I love me some Rachel Ray. I bought a couple of, her, couple of her pots. I mean, her pans. Cookware, dishware, whatever they are. And they're so cute. I love them so much. But anyways. Rachel Ray be at home cooking. We love it. Stay at home. Do what you got to do. She's up in the mountains, snowed in. But I'm like, what the hell did she do before this? I don't know. I guess she taped a bunch of shows, and then they would play reruns. But now, she's like, I'm in the mountains. I'm at home. It's snowing. I'm cooking. Great. We love it. We love it. It's John and her and a camera. And some vegetables. My thing is, where did I write it? Rachel, please comb your hair. <laughs> I can't believe I have to say this. Rachel Ray, please comb your hair. Girl, you look absolutely... I know you don't care. I know you don't care. But baby, you're on TV. You're on YouTube. They're posting you on Facebook. Comb your hair, baby. I just put it in a bun. The clothes, that's another subject, but that's not important right now. You put the glasses on. We don't see your face that well much. But baby, comb your hair. Her hair is in three different directions. Hopefully not in the food. Child, I don't... Comb your hair. Also... Somebody else said this, and I picked up on the comment, and I kind of, I have been, I've been looking at it for a while. Rachel's energy. Somebody, they said her energy. That's that's, that's the words I'm going to use. Her energy. Like, literally, her energy. Not her, like, her energy is bad. No, her literally, her literal energy is low. Before the pandemic, Rachel was on, like, a thousand. She looked like she was having fun with the camera, having fun with the audience. The pandemic happened. She was at home. She seemed a little bit better, a little bit more vibrant. Maybe, you know, you need a rest. Everybody needed a rest. She was at home. And now it's like ever since she's been at home, and you know, she's back and forth in the studio. Her energy. Seems like it's down and like, I don't want to be here. And like the way she's cooking now is more like, like a teacher in a bad way. Rachel used to be fun. You know, the 30 minute days, weeks a meal, 
were fun to watch. And, you know, she's throwing salt and she's laughing and she's garbage bowling and everything. Now it's just like, it's down to a science so much. It feels like that she's just like giving you the instructions. This is how you do it. Please stop clapping audience. I'm not finished. Okay. John, pour me a drink. It's just like, I don't know what happened to Rachel. (sighs) I don't know what happened to Rachel. I don't have any advice. That's all I got. Check me out on Spotify at the Dare Show Podcast. Check me out on Apple Podcasts at the Dare Show Podcast. Check me out on YouTube. Check me out on everywhere. There's a podcast on Anchor. I'm also on Anchor. Thank you so much for listening. Let me, let me know what you think. Am I wrong about my Kenny B. Center vibes a session? Am I thoroughly wrong about the breakthrough? <laughs> what do you think about Mariah changing up her vocals? Something has to happen at this point. What do you think about um, Rachel, for other Rachel fans? What's going on with Rachel? And I have this fierce single that Sammy McKinney and these little guys put together, baby. I got a single that'll make you jump up and dance. And if you can't dance to that, you got a hole in your soul, okay? Mm.